I've saved the planet once again. The film is over. Who wants pizza? Cool! Have you finished with your homework? I'm doing my math homework. We're learning fractions. I finished my homework before watching the film. Hurry up, Anna. Finish up quickly before pizza's here. Pizza's here. Hooray! Whoopee! Whoopee! Let's eat then. Mmm, so yummy. Anna, tell us what you've learned about fractions. A fraction can be a part of a whole. For example, we are a family of five. Two adults, mom and dad, and three kids. Me and my siblings. Very well, so what fractions would reflect this data? I know that two-fifths of the group are adults. Number five below the line is called the denominator. It indicates that we are five people in the group. Number two above the line is called the numerator. It indicates the two people in the group are adults. Exactly. So, what fraction would represent the number of kids in our family? Hmm, three-fifths. In this group of five, three people are kids. Well done, Anna. Four cheese pizza, my favorite. The first pizza was delicious. Let's try the second one. Anna, did you know that if we divide an object into two equal parts, we would also have fractions? This pizza, for example, if we divided it in four equal parts and ate one of them, we would have eaten one fourth of the pizza. The rest stays in the box. What fraction would that be? Well, if there are three alike pieces left in the box, and there were four pieces before, there are three-fourths of pizza left. That's it. The number below the line is the denominator. It indicates into how many equal parts the object is divided. In this case, it's divided in four parts. The numerator is the number above the line. It indicates the number of parts taken away from the whole. And if we divided this last pizza in six parts and ate two, there would be four six of pizza left in the box. How many have we eaten? Two six. Very well, Mario. You've earned yourself a swell dessert. But before that, shall we recap? Sure. Let's look at fractions of a group or divisions of objects. For fractions of a group, the denominator represents the number of elements in the group. And the numerator represents the elements we have selected. We are five in this family. Three of us are kids. So three-fifths of our family are kids. And two-fifths of the group are adults. That's mom and dad. We could also see fractions when we divided an object into equal parts. The denominator represents the number of parts in which the object is divided. And the numerator represents the part of the fraction we are talking about. This pizza is missing one-fourth of its whole. And there are three-fourths left. You really earned this pizza, kids. Hello, math friends. Do you know what these numbers are? They are called fractions. Do you know how to read them? You don't? No problem. I'll explain it to you. Fractions are made up by two numbers, the number above and the number below. A line separates these numbers. The number above the line is called the numerator. Repeat after me, numerator. Well done. The number below the line is called the denominator. Can you repeat after me? Denominator. That's it! We read the numerator as we would normally read any number. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. The number we read differently is the denominator. When the denominator is a 2, we say half. So we would read this fraction as 1 half. 1 for the numerator and half for the denominator. If we change the numerator for a 2, we would read the fraction as 2 halves. Easy, right? When the denominator is a 3, we say third. This means that this fraction would be... Come on, you say it! 
That's it, one third. And if I use a two for the numerator, how would we read the fraction? Two thirds, great! When the denominator is a four, we say fourths. This fraction would be two fourths. And this one? Very well, three fourths. And so on. If the denominator is a five, we say fifths. If it's a six, we say sixths. If it is a seven, we say sevenths. If it's an eight, we say eighths. If it's a nine, we say ninths. And if it's a 10, we say tenths. Easy, right? From 11 onwards, it's the same as before. Just keep adding the suffix THS. So if the denominator is an 11, we would say elevenths. If it's a 12, we would say twelfths, and so on, and so forth. Let's see if you understood. How would you read this fraction? 7 21st. Very well. And this one? 20 30 seconds. Way to go! Now you know how to read fractions. Shall we recap? Let's see if you remember everything. How do we read this fraction? One half. And this one? Four fifths. One more. Eight twelfths. Excellent! Do you want to keep on learning? Try for free our Smile and Learn platform for a month and enjoy all of our games, videos, and interactive stories. Go for it! Download Smile and Learn on your mobile, tablet, or PC.